Okay, this is the first lesson from module three. Module three is called rational numbers and lesson one is called classifying rational numbers. So what are rational numbers? Well, let's back up and talk about all the number systems that you know so far. First, you know what whole numbers are. Whole numbers are all the positive numbers in zero. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basically, whole numbers are the counting numbers, starting with zero, that you have known probably your whole life. This year, we were introduced to integers. Integers are all the whole numbers, which means they include zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. But now we are also going to include their opposites. So integers are all the whole numbers and their opposites. So the opposite of one is negative one. The opposite of negative two is two. The opposite of three is negative three. So all of the positive numbers, all of the negative numbers, and zero are integers. So now we're moving on to rational numbers. Rational numbers are all of the integers and all of the fractions and decimals. Okay, so now we're going to include positive numbers, negative numbers, zero, and add to those numbers fractions and decimals. Okay, so the number line starts to look like this now. We can have zero, we can have point, 0 0.5, we can have one, two, we can have two and a half. We can also have negative one, negative one and a half, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative four and a half. So all of the positive, negative, zero, and fractions and decimals are rational numbers. So here is a big circle full of rational numbers. So right here we have one and two thirds. Over here we have negative 2.3. Right in the middle we have zero. Down here we have 2.3. Over here we have five. Over here we have negative seven. All of these numbers, positive numbers, the negative numbers, zero, and fractions and decimals, they're all rational numbers, okay? So this smaller group inside the rational numbers are the integers, because we have negative seven, positive seven, zero. These are all the positive and negative and zero. But we have left out of the integers, the decimals and fractions, okay? Now within the integers, now they're all of these numbers are within, inside the circle for rational numbers. So they're all rational numbers. A smaller group of them are integers. Now an even smaller group are whole numbers because whole numbers are all of the positives, zero and all of the positive numbers. So zero, one, two, and so on. But they're all rational numbers. All whole numbers are integers. All whole numbers and integers are rational numbers. Okay, so one of the things you're doing in this lesson is classifying numbers, which means what group does the number belong in? Is it a whole number only? Is it an integer? Is it a rational number? Okay, so, so what makes a number rational? A rational number is any number that can be turned into a fraction. So how do you turn a whole number like 34 into a fraction? How do you turn negative seven into a fraction? How do you turn a number like a decimal, 0 0.6, into a fraction? How do you turn a mixed number like 2 and 3 fourths into a fraction? We're going to learn how to do all of that in our notes. So in this lesson, you're doing two things. You're learning how to classify numbers, which means which group do, does the number belong in? Is it a whole number? Is it an integer? Is it a rational number? And we are going to figure out how to turn all of these types of rational numbers into a fraction, okay? So now we're going to start doing notes. All right, so here we are, here are our notes. And again, this is lesson 3.1, classifying rational numbers. And you see it says page one there. That's because there will be two pages of notes today. So you see right here says page one. This little icon right here is what you click on to watch the video. Now, whole numbers. What are whole numbers? Again, we already went over this in the PowerPoint. Whole numbers are the counting numbers. They start with a zero and go like one, two, three, four, and they keep going all of the positive numbers, zero, and then all of the positive numbers are whole numbers. 
Now, integers, integers are all of the whole numbers, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and their opposites. Okay, so opposites, there's 0, the opposite of 1 is negative 1, the opposite of 2 is negative 2, the opposite of 2 is negative 3, and so on. So negative 4 and 4 are opposites. Negative 5 and 5 are opposites. Okay, so that's the integers, all the whole numbers and their opposites. Now let's move on to what this lesson is about, which is rational numbers. Rational numbers include all of the integers. So if rational numbers include all of the integers, that means rational numbers includes zero, all the positive numbers and all of the negative numbers. And then we're going to add to that set of numbers fractions and decimals. Rational numbers are any numbers that can be written as a fraction. Okay, so A over B. So a fraction is a number, a little line, and then another number. So a numerator on top, denominator on bottom where B, the number on bottom, the denominator, cannot be zero, all right? So we're going to do two things in this lesson. We're going to learn how to classify rational numbers, which means which category does the number go in? Is it a whole number? Is it an integer? Is it a rational number? Remember, they're all rational numbers. So the other thing we're going to do in this lesson is figure out how can we convert or write these different types of numbers as fractions, because all rational numbers can be written as fractions. So how do you write these rational numbers as division in the form of a fraction? So I want you to start to think about a fraction as a division problem. A divided by B. A divided by B. That's what fractions are, division problems, okay? So how do you convert this whole number 34 into a fraction? Well, you use 1 as the denominator. So 34 for the numerator and 1 as the denominator is the same as 34. Because 34 divided by 1 is 34. Okay? Now, how do you turn this integer, negative 7, into a fraction? Again, you're going to use 1 as the denominator. So you put negative 7 as the numerator and 1 as the denominator. Because negative 7 divided by 1, guess what, is negative 7. How do you change this decimal into a fraction? Well, you're going to use the number as the numerator. Then you're going to use the place value as the denominator. This six is in the tenths place. This six is in the tenths place. So one place after the decimal is the tenths place. So we're going to use the number itself, six, as the numerator, and we're going to use the place value as the denominator. If one place after the decimal is the tenths place, we're going to use 10 as the denominator. So this decimal says six tenths. This fraction says six tenths. So I want to show you in the PowerPoint the different place values as just a review of place values. Okay, back to our PowerPoint, all right? So this right here is a picture of place value. So you see if the decimal point is right here, um, this first place at, to the left of the decimal is the ones place. So if I have a five right here, I have five, five ones. If I have a one in the tens place, that's going to be 10 and 1 and 0 makes 10. So hopefully you have learned your place value earlier 
But if you don't quite remember all your place values, especially the place values after the decimal, here is a way to review. Here's the decimal point. The first place to the right of the decimal point is the tenths place. The next place is the hundredths, and then the thousandths, then the ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, and millionths. So a decimal like this, it is it has two places to the right of the decimal, right? And the seven is in that second place. Six is in the first place, that's the tenths. Seven is in the second place. So we would say this is 67 hundredths because the seven is in the hundredths place. This is 67 hundredths. A decimal like this, where we have six, seven, and a one, the one is in this thousandth spot. So here's the tenths, here's the hundredths, here's the thousandths. So this would be 671 thousandths. That's what we, how we would read that. 671 thousandths, okay? Now, none of these decimals, these two decimals, they don't have any whole numbers. There's no number in the ones place. There's a zero there. So there's, there are no ones. This, so there's, so this, these, both of these numbers are less than one because they are decimals. They're more than zero, but they're less than one. They're somewhere in between one and zero, okay? So this again is a picture of the place values. Okay, so in our notes, the next thing we're gonna do is talk about converting a mixed number to a fraction, okay? So converting mixed number, this is two, this is two, basically this is a whole number, two. And then this is a half. So when you have a whole number with a fraction, we call that a mixed number, all right? You have a whole number, two, and then a fraction. So it's like if you have two and a half cookies, right? So you have two whole cookies, but then you also have a half of another cookie. So you have two and a half, that's a mixed number. This number can also be converted into a fraction. How do you do that? So first you keep the denominator, all right? So you're gonna keep the denominator and we're gonna do this in the notes. It will be easier for me to show you in the notes, okay? So converting mixed number to fraction, that is next. That's the last thing we're gonna do on the page. Um, and so it'll be easier to see in the notes. All right, so back to our notes, here they are. We're gonna convert this mixed number into a fraction, okay? Convert mixed number into a fraction. So. Here is three and two fifths, three and two fifths. To find the numerator of our fraction, we're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number. So this is the new, this is the, we're going to multiply, we're going to find the numerator. So we're going to convert this into a fraction. Okay, numerator and denominator. Numerator goes on top, denominator goes on bottom. To find the numerator, we're going to multiply the denominator. This is the denominator five. We're going to multiply the denominator by the whole number. Remember, this is the whole number three. This is the denominator. We're going to multiply those three times five. That's 15. Okay, three times five is 15. And then we're going to add the numerator. So Five times three is 15 plus the numerator is 17. Five times three is 15 plus two is 17. So our new numerator is 17. So to find the numerator of our new fraction, we're gonna multiply the denominator of the mixed number by the whole number in the mixed number, then add the numerator in the mixed number. Five times 15 plus two, 17. And we're going to keep the same denominator. Keep the same denominator. So five is the denominator in the mixed number. So five will be the denominator in the new fraction. Okay. So rational numbers are any number that can be written as a division problem in the form of a fraction. A divided by B 
but B cannot be zero, okay? B cannot be zero. So we can convert a whole number into a fraction by putting a one as the denominator. We can convert an integer into a fraction by putting a one as the denominator. We can convert a decimal into a fraction by using the number itself as the numerator and the place value of the decimal as the denominator. And we can convert a mixed number into a fraction by multiplying the denominator times the whole number plus the numerator, we make that the new numerator and then keep the same denominator. What that tells you is whole numbers, integers, decimals, and mixed numbers are all rational numbers. So now let's practice classifying rational numbers, okay? So on the next page of your notes, you have page two of the notes, which looks like this. So this is a Venn diagram, okay? Venn diagram. So we're gonna write that in the notes, a Venn diagram, B, E, N, N. A Venn diagram shows how groups are related. So this Venn diagram is gonna show how the group of rational numbers is related to integers and whole numbers, okay? So let's figure out how this works. The rational numbers include all of the integers and all of the whole numbers. So, Rational numbers include all of them. The fractions, the decimals, the integers, and the whole numbers, they're all included. The integers include positive numbers and negative numbers and zero, right? Okay, so how do we classify numbers? Let's practice that down here. So you kind of need to see both. I'm gonna zoom this out just a little bit so you can see both. All right, this says place these numbers on the Venn diagram and then circle the set or sets of numbers it belongs to. We're gonna start with 75. Where would 75 go in here? Well, 75 is a whole number, so we're gonna put it right in the middle. So 75 is a whole number, so 75 is also a rational number, and it's also an integer, because integers are all the positive numbers, negative numbers, and zero. Rational numbers are all the positive numbers, negative numbers, zero, and fractions and decimals. So 75 is a rational number, it's an integer and it's a whole number, okay? Where does negative three go? Well, negative three goes right here. Negative three would go right here. Hopefully you can see that, okay? Where is, is negative three rational? Yes, they're all rational. Rational numbers includes all of them. So we circle that. Is negative three an integer? Yes, because integers include zero, positive numbers, and negative numbers. Is negative three a whole number? No, it's not, because whole numbers are only zero and positive, and negative three is negative. So it's not a whole number, but it is an integer and it is rational. Okay, let me zoom out a little more so we can get to the next one. The next one says, Three fourths. Where would we put that? We could put that right here, three fourths. So three fourths is a rational number. It's not an integer. Integers are zero, positive, and negative. This is a fraction, right? It's and it's also not a whole number because whole numbers are only zero and positive. Last but not least, we have 0 0.35 or 35 hundredths. That's also just a rational number. So we could put that somewhere like right in here. Fractions and decimals are included in the rational numbers, but we can't include them in the integers or the whole numbers, okay? 
And that is how you classify numbers, okay? Classifying rational numbers. So you know now the two things that this lesson is about. It is about classifying rational numbers and it is about converting whole numbers, integers, decimals, and mixed numbers into fractions because that is what you can do with a rational number. You can make it into a fraction. So next, what you're going to do is you're going to move on to the next page, which is your practice problems, okay? You have two links for IXL, and then you have some convert, making these numbers into fractions, and these, this is classifying the numbers. And notice these check boxes. When you finish these practices, you're going to put a check. You're going to check them off your list, all right? So move on to your practice problem.